Um, come on in. We apologize yesterday. You actually run for scheduled yesterday. You've been uh, uh, hanging around the cube. Uh, of course, right. we're in the main area. For the folks who can't see here, we are in the uh, ballroom, the Grand Central Ballroom at the Sheridan, New York City. There's lunch going on. We're on kind of a break right now, a little bit of background noise. Great vibe here, really dynamic environment. It's exciting. This is kind of day two of the two-day event. Uh, people are pumped up. And Bob Gorley, cru uh, Crucial Point. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Well, thanks. <laughs> you're here, all right. You uh, here yesterday, so I apologize about the, the uh, bump in the calendar. Appreciate it, but great. Thanks for coming on. Well, thanks for this and thanks for the service. You know, lots of folks watch you. Um, I hear about it all the time. We see you on Twitter. It's a good being here in person. Yeah, we love doing it. It's a great, we, we should share the, we share the knowledge. Um, share with us what your perspective is this year, what's going on. Just describe to the folks out there the scene here. I mean, it's packed house. We're at a hotel, not a big, you know, hall. Um, and what the conversations are in the hallway. What's the mood, what's the vibe, what's the kind of movement going on? Well, one thing it may be hard for folks to understand is how full it is here. The way Mike Olson put it was, it is fire marshal full, it really is. So um, it's packed, and it's packed with people who are passionate about this idea of making sense over information. Um, we know that you can make sense, more sense of the data, um, and that is what I think everybody here shares that spirit. So you have a place that is packed with people who share this common vision and spirit um, and the conversation is all around, around that. You know, people asking now, what are you yeah, doing yeah. in data? Uh, what are your mission needs in data? Um, and then the folks I interact with that I like to hear from are those who are bringing yeah, yeah. new technologies to the mission. Um, and many of the people are asking me questions about what are the mission needs of the enterprise, so it's an interesting dialogue. So you guys are a, a consulting firm. You focus on the security space. I understand you gave an award yesterday. Is that we right? Did. Yep. Talk, talk about that a little bit. Well, so we also uh, we run a couple blogs and a couple research sites. And um, what we do is we try to track emerging trends. And in government, of course, we've been working uh, uh, cybersecurity, uh, cloud computing kind of uh, platforms too. And then uh, the big data. We've been working these issues for several years and watching um, pockets of excellence pop up in the federal government that are really addressing key missions. So I thought our thought was we would like to be able to accelerate the innovation around big data and one way of doing that is uh, helping the community share lessons learned. Um, and so we decided to create this award, the Government Big Data Solutions Award. We uh, created a, a panel of judges, which I'll tell you about in just a second, and then we, uh, we broadly um, advertise this inside the federal government by connecting directly with um, individuals who are working on big data projects. We asked every CIO of every agency if they have folks they would like to nominate. Um, and then, of course, we reach out other ways, our blogs, our Twitter feeds, our other things, and we solicited nominations for this award. We asked the nominees to write about their mission impact as the number one criteria the judges would be interested in. Um, we got a, a, almost 50 nominees. We uh, um, got that to our judges. We narrowed them down to the top five, which we uh, briefed the top five uh, yesterday, and then centered in on one key award winner that all the judges thought were um, just um, using best practices in this big data world to serve uh, citizens the best way possible. Let me slow down and talk about the judges. Um, Doug Cutting was one of our judges. Um, and then, um, you know, he's esteemed in this community. Everybody knows him. He spoke we just today. called him a superhero. That's right. They, I mean, they are. They are. He's awesome. He absolutely is. And uh, so he was taking a look at these things from the architecture standpoint. How well are they applying these tools to the mission? Then um, others are folks who uh, reach the same level of superstar performance in the federal space. Uh, one is um, Alan Wade, who's a highly regarded uh, chief information officer in the federal government. He was at CIA and um, also for the entire intelligence community. So he was a judge looking at this. And then Ed Grandstedt from uh, Kinetic, uh, who's a forward-thinking individual who steers their research and development into new solutions. Uh, Ryan LaSalle from Accenture, um, another guy steering research and development uh, for a broad swath of uh, Great, you're getting all the name drops in there. Good shout outs. Well, I tell you, <laughs> these are awesome. We want these judges to come back next year. Chris yeah. Dorbeck is another who runs the Dorbeck Insider. And so these judges are the ones who are looking through all of the um, information to come yeah, up yeah. with the five key award nominees. And the winner, well, send us and an the winner email is? On, on this because we'd like to do, I'd like to do a post on this on my blog okay. just to kind of promote that because that's important. This, the, you mentioned earlier the community involved here is 
kind of intoxicating at the moment because everyone's kind of looking at each other saying, wow, this is actually really happening. It's growing like crazy. There's real demand in the marketplace. There's a real market. Our channels are developing. Real solutions are being built. So it's super exciting and it reminds me of, you know, the you know, PC revolution, the client server where it's like so obviously happening. Um, and it's just a great marketplace. So with that said, what are you seeing as the most emerging hottest elements of this trend that's kind of kind of come next. So we obviously know about Hadoop. We kind of know the strategy. We were talking to a lot of people in the cube here, as you know, people are watching. But we're trying to get at what's next. You know, obviously application's going to start coming out. What are you seeing that's going to around the corner that is going to be worked on? We had a good perspective from Todd P from uh, Battery uh, Ventures. He talked about the applications and the tools, the platforms emerging, white spaces. Can you share your opinion? Yeah, so I have an opinion about the tools, of course, the applications that ride over this. That's important, but I think there's something even more important at this stage, and that is um, making this ecosystem of Hadoop um, more enterprise ready, being able to apply life cycle management tools against uh, clusters and entire big data solutions. So enterprise management tools that help you do things like uh, user authorization, um, user management, auditing, uh, making sure that all the processes are running right and making it easy to lifecycle manage the Hadoop clusters. So things like the, the Cloudera Enterprise Manager, I was, um, I loved the session today. It just blew me away. Yeah, we had Ed on. We didn't have a chance. Can you just give us a quick review of the Enterprise Manager? Yeah, why were you so impressed? I was impressed for several reasons. One, uh, the comprehensive thought about lifecycle management of Hadoop clusters. You know, they all have a, a beginning, a middle, and end. You know, and what do you do while it's there? And how do you keep it running and performing it at top speed? And then as you see the graphic user interface, if you know a little bit about these clusters, it's just a tremendous way to present all the information going on. You see um, every process running, every server running. You want to stand up a new cluster? It, um, you tell it what hardware you've got. It helps guide you through the decisions about what is going to run on what piece of hardware. Uh, you're still in charge, but it's giving you great advice. And then you start up your cluster. Keep it running. When it's time to spool down, you know it helps you do that too. And all throughout, um, it it logs what's happening. It helps you authorize users so the wrong guys are not getting in there. Um, and it does it in a fantastic interface. Uh, it's, I liked it. And I think that's important because you know the applications are where it's at. But you don't yeah. run those applications unless you have the cluster running right. Yeah, and you want to make that as turnkey and easy as possible. You know, simple, elegant, and really good to use because all the effort is on the tools, is on the apps. So you don't want to have to tinker around and chase logs and you know look things up. I think that's a real differentiator. I'm mean, I'm impressed with Cloudera's strategy there, and and you know, and they're cool about that. They you know they're saying, hey, we don't mind charging for it, but we're going to continue to be open. And so they've really been clear, this, this Hadoop world on that strategy. Right, right. You know, uh, something else I wanted to mention about this award, you know, the, the number one awardee is someone that I think most people listening to this broadcast will have used this capability without them knowing it. That is, if you have ever searched any government web page, you're using this, uh, um, this award winner, the USA Search. Over 500 government web pages, including the, the whitehouse.gov uh, uh, website is using a, the USA Search solution. White House Patent Office, right? I mean, so. Well, so yes, absolutely. The, uh, uh, the, 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 you know, the, uh, the Park Service, the uh, IRS. Department of Treasury, uh, 500 different major web properties. And so if they're giving you suggested search, just like you would expect on Google or somewhere else, um, they're giving analytics to the people who run those web properties. And it's all with this um, CDH3 big data type framework. Okay, we're gonna, we are on a tough time frame here, but I want to ask one final question, then I know Dave has a question. What are you, what are you expecting for next year? I mean, and, and, and try to shoot the arrow forward a little bit on, on the product side, the platform side, and then marketplace, customer activity. Can you share your vision for what might happen, what's logical for next year? Well, one thing that a lot of folks have been talking about is the application space, okay? Making it easy for the business users to use this as if you're logging on to your LinkedIn profile or logging on to some other online property. Yeah. Um, the users want that super easy point and click. So um, applications built on top of the Hadoop stack is, I think will be big next year. Well, let's continue to keep in touch on Twitter. Dave, you have a final question? Uh, I just want to thank you for coming on. I appreciate your flexibility with the scheduling, Bob, Bob Gorley, and uh, at Crucial Point. Good luck with the the, the yeah. operation and, and, and congratulations on the awards. Contact us on Twitter, I yeah. want to do that post on the awards yeah. and get that amplified a little bit and put that out there, it's good yeah. to share. Great stuff. And so uh, we'll see you on Twitter. Great, we'll okay. see you later. Yeah, right. thanks. thanks again all for right. what you guys good are doing. Congratulations, thank thanks for the uh, great interview.